Hello everyone, welcome to Let's Play Dark Souls. This is part 9, you guys know the drill. We're picking up where we left off, and we're gonna just uh, carry on with the level. So coming out this way, this guy, if you run out too far, might do that annoying charge attack that I was talking about. But raise your shield and you'll be fine. So where are we going? We're going this way. Um, this is where we saw the rats before. Now I'm gonna be a little careful because I don't wanna get poisoned here. So I'm just going to take them out, because like I said, they can drop humanity pretty commonly, and we want as much that- oh, and here we go. Finally proof. <laughs> so yeah, um, I think that's like the only one I've found so far on camera, which is kind of annoying, but it's no big deal. we got got plenty to go around. So anyway, where are we going? Um, last time I sort of just ran down here, grabbed the key, because we were getting close to the end of the episode, and I just was in a rush. But uh, the way we want to go is going to be over here, and ooh, we got some more humanity. Awesome. Uh, so this guy, uh, we're going to be saying hello to him soon enough, just sort of give him a little taunt. But in the meantime, we got some sewers to explore. So I like to be very careful here because if you're not, um, if you notice there's like a hole down there, um, <laughs> be careful because down those holes is one of the most annoying areas in the game, which uh, I will get to in a second here. So coming up, this uh, is thankfully not the boss. Instead, oh, but it is a little bit of a mini boss. So over here, you're gonna notice it's another one of those channelers that we saw in the church. Now, we wanna try to kill him. Okay, that's good, that's good. This is bad though, because those rats are extra big. And, oh no. Okay, it's not over yet, it's not over yet. Gotta heal, gotta heal. Okay, okay, hold on, hold on. Let's maybe attack first. I got one. Alright, that went a lot smoother <laughs> than I was worried about for a second there. So yeah, that part um, can be a little annoying. So those channelers, they do boost the uh, the attack of any enemies around them. And these rats, if you notice, you know, these ones are a little bit bigger, and they sort of hunt together. They can uh, they can catch you by surprise and do a lot of damage, as we just saw. And I nearly got poisoned and taken out there. So this is actually a decent time to showcase how those mosses work that we picked up in Docker Garden. All you have to do is use it when you have that little poison meter there, and you're all set. So I am going to heal up there. And over here, if you remember a few episodes ago, I talked about how you, can, um, you might want to poke in a bit further before you warp out. Uh, that's the large titanite shard that you can pick up. That way when you're back topside you can quickly head to Andre, get your weapon upgraded, and then you can uh, naturally upgrade some more as we continue on. So here we got a good view. Um, this is, uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna be coming down here later, and it was very important that we killed that channeler, so otherwise he'll, uh, he'll be giving a boost to um, something that we're gonna have to fight later. But anyway, moving on. Now we're back in the labyrinth, and there's going to be a bunch of rats and some of those um, slime things from earlier. Oh, yeah, look at that. That stabbing move. Um, yeah, the physics, he's just going to get caught there. So, uh, normally I'll take a shortcut in this part of the game, so I'm not entirely sure sure if I have to go down a hole, but um, I will I will showcase the shortcut afterwards. For now, I'm just sort of being thorough. Um, oh, okay, so up here is our friend Mr. Rat. So let's be careful here, because he can hit pretty hard, but he's not as tough as he looks. Just gotta be careful. And there we go, just like that, he's dead. And uh, that one is a mini-boss, so he's gone for good. So let's uh, grab his humanity. And over here is just another soul item. Yeah, uh, so that item up there we're gonna get in a little bit. Now, I believe we came in that way. Right here is where we picked up the key and entered the source. So I think there's something somewhere. Is that the only door here? I should know this, right? Because I'm the one making videos. Um, <laughs> well, for now, let's go this way. And I think. We are gonna have to drop down one of these holes. Let me uh, let me wander around just a little, little bit more. Uh, 
because, yeah, you know what, I'm like lost anyway. Yeah. Okay, we didn't go this way yet. So there may be hope yet. Just kill this thing real quick. Really, really nasty and gross. But, you know, we're in the sores, so I don't think we should expect much more. Yeah, okay, I think we're gonna have to go down, so uh, may as well drop down here. And let's hope... Okay, so these things <laughs> are a problem. Uh, now, if we go about this carefully, it won't be too bad. But that black smoke that they just did is the real issue. Um, as far as, like, you know, conventional enemies go, they're... they're uh, oh, God. oh, God, there's so many. Uh, they're not too bad. But if we get caught in that cloud of nastiness, we're going to have some problems. So normally I skip this entire, like, under labyrinth because it is, like, so dangerous. <laughs> but you know, I'm trying to showcase the game for you guys, which does mean I have to play through. Okay. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Ah, okay. And it got me. I'm cursed. Uh, yeah. So as you can see, that kills you if you stay in it for too long. But uh, there's, there's another nasty side effect of getting cursed. While, you're cur while cursed, your HP is halved. Lifting the curse requires a purging stone or the aid of the healer in New Londo. Yes, and um, if you see in the top left there, my HP is not what it used to be. Um, thankfully though, I did, uh, I did pick up one of those purging stones, so we can, we can solve this pretty easily. I'm not going to do it yet, because we're actually not done down there, unfortunately. So. In the meantime, I'm going to have to make do with only half health. But it ain't so bad. Now, this right here, uh, getting cursed in the depths here, this is sort of like uh, one of those brick walls of Dark Souls. Um, I will say, and this was even before my time when I played, uh, curses used to stack, which would mean that, let's say I go down there and I get myself cursed again. I'm... Uh, I'm gonna get this, what I have now is gonna get halved again, so I'm only gonna have quarter HP. And then if I get cursed again, I'm only gonna have eighth HP. And this would continue until you're down to like, you know, one hit of anything will kill you. And a lot of people would just, you know, quit. Uh, they did update it so that it's not as brutal. But, um, thankfully I never had to live through that. Ooh, I think that's the cleaner way to go down. Okay, let's just take him out. Wow, that was fast. Uh, so, the annoying thing about getting cursed, and, oh um, no, I died before I can get my souls. Which means that one humanity and the 9,000 souls are gone, but, you know what, it's gonna be fine. Uh, so let's try this again. <laughs> Hopefully, this time I can get it. There's, there's just one more item we gotta grab down there. And it's, uh, it's actually a pretty cool item, so let's see if I can get my hands on it. So I gotta run down this way. I'm not, I'm not gonna bother killing the rats every time for you guys, because that would get kind of annoying. But I do recommend if you uh, if you're not in a hurry that you do that because it may not seem like it now, but uh, there is going to be a point later on where we're going to want to use a lot of humanity, and just the more of it we have in general, the better. Okay, so let's uh, let's go down to handing our weapon here. Let's roll as soon as we land and not waste a moment. Be a little bit more proactive about getting out the gas. Uh, so yeah, the other annoying thing with getting cursed, right? Um, if you noticed when I first got cursed. Did this guy go in here somewhere? Uh, no. Okay, so when I first got cursed, you know, it took a few moments, but uh, that second time I got cursed like right away, that's because one of the one of the things that determines your curse resistance is if you're uh, human or not. Um, so we're not anymore, and you actually can't reverse your hollowing if you're cursed, which is very unfortunate. But, okay, careful there. Um, so yeah, that means we're gonna we're gonna keep getting cursed a lot easier. But hopefully, we're gonna be okay. Now, I think if we go this way, God, this place is so confusing. You'll notice too that there's just statues of people that are uh, that also got cursed, and the deal with them is. I think that those are actually other players that happen to get cursed. And like their body will appear in your world, which is kind of funny, but also kind of grim. Um, this is actually the exit, so that's where we're going to want to go, but like I said, we still got some business. And I'm super lost right now, guys. I think, uh, yeah, so here's one of those bodies I was talking about. Someone 
Yeah, got unfortunately cursed there. And I'm sure my body is going to show up in someone else's world. Um, maybe even yours if you're playing along. Uh, so that's just a soul item. That's not exactly what we want. Uh, let's see, there's another. These guys are called basilisks. And um, if you notice too, so they obviously got those big googly. Oh god! Up on me. Um, so what I was trying to say is, uh, they've got these like big googly eyes, which uh, is kind of funny. But oh Jesus! Let me please just explain. Okay, okay, okay. I'm seriously terrified of <laughs> this part, guys. Okay, but can you please not... Alright, I'm cornered. This is where we make our final stand. Thank you. Okay. So what I'm trying to say is those googly eyes aren't their real eyes. I'm trying to get a good view, but it's kind of hard to see. But um, they have small beady eyes underneath them um, that they actually see with. Just a little fun fact. Um, as if this is like a nature show, but... Everything in this game is like unholy. Um, ooh, this might be it. So, it looks like we're going to have to make a bit of a jump here. There we go. And is this what I want? Nope, it's humanity. I mean, I do want humanity, but I also want... Might be in here. <gasps> I think this is it. There we go, Ringo the Evil Eye. So this is a fun little item. Um, absorbs HP from fallen enemies. Yeah. Uh, which means that when we kill things, we get a little bit of health back. Now, I'm actually very happy with my current rings, so I don't think I'm going to use them. But I do highly, highly recommend it if, uh, if you're wondering what to use. It's, that's like one of those nice rings for, uh, you know, if you're just exploring an area and you're not entirely sure where it is you have to go, but you're burning through Estes, Estes a lot. Um, that'll keep, your, keep yourself going a bit more, but I don't quite think I need it, so I'm not going to use it. Now, um, at this point, I got what I want, so we're not going to mess around down here anymore. Uh, so let's go to a bonfire, because I do want to cure this curse, and we do need to be human. So let me uh, go ahead and use that purging stone. So I always, always, always love to buy one beforehand, and there we go. Now we're cursed. Now we're not cursed, and all is well. And if you didn't come down with one, you'd have to trek all the way out, or you'd have to continue on that horrible, horrible state, which um, I actually had to do. Um, let me tell a story of um, when I first played Dark Souls, and uh, this was a, from a time when, you know, when I was first playing, I'm like, I don't want to look anything up. I want to go in blind. It'll be fun. And um, I did have a lot of fun that way. Um, I highly recommend to play through like that. But that did mean that I had no idea what the heck was going on when I got cursed. Um, you know, I, Come down here, it's a very dirty, dingy place, and you know, you're gonna not feel, you know, it's, it's not bright like it is outside the Undead Parish, so, you know, your morale is down, things are dark, and then all of a sudden you're cursed. And on top of it, too, I didn't know about having to repair weapons, and my, uh, my weapon broke, so I was having just an awful time. <laughs> but what it led to was, um, eventually, you know, I called it a night, eventually, and I'm just like, I, I, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> And I'm trying to think of where I want to go here. Uh, I, I want to go back to the room where we fought the big rat. But anyway, you know, I called it a night. Things were just going awful. And um, I was telling my friend, uh, this was in college, you know, I would like play at night and talk to him in the day about it. And great, we're going to have to fight these guys again. But uh, I told him, you know, I'm cursed. What the heck? This sucks. So uh, he told me that, you know, so I'm going to focus a little bit here. There we go. Okay. Uh, back to the story. So he told me, about, you know, purging stones, um, and how the guy from the church sells them, and I'm like, alright, that's, that's what I gotta do, and, uh, so I worked my way out of the depths here, which was really annoying, because when you, when you ultimately do, like, sort of clear this large area out that we're at, um, there is an easy way out, but I ended up having to sort of backtrack, and just, you know, go back up where I came, and it's just, it's a huge slog fest, and, um, Let's see, I think I gotta go up there. Let's hope I'm, I don't think I can make that jump since it's an upward angle. But anyway, you know, my morale is broken. My hal my main halberd, which was what I was using at the time, wasn't working, and I was cursed. And I was fighting through one of the ugliest, dirtiest parts of the game. But finally, when I made it out, and I uh, work my way back up, and I get back to the top of the church, and I finally buy the purging stone off of the guy. And I'm finally clear of the curse. It's like this actual feeling of relief. 
and then I walk outside and the sun is shining and I'm just like, oh my god, this game is amazing. Um, yeah, so the way I told that there was probably, you know, a very scattered story, but um, to me that's like one of the moments where I really uh, fell in love with this game. And, uh, you know, I did some more training up back there, I got a new weapon, I leveled it up, I just came prepared and I just came down and just, you know, sort of crushed this whole area and it was, it was awesome. So, um, anyway, the reason I came back here is that you can either wade your way through the lower labyrinth and then go to where those rats were that we killed, um, and then you'll emerge there, or you can just come here and slide down, stick to the left, and boom, here we are, where we gotta go. So, if uh, we go this way, this is where we came from, uh, here are those rats, which we do have to kill again. But they're not as bad. Uh, our wolf ring is doing us a lot of work here. Um, we're able to actually take the hit as we attack. But anyway, the reason I'm coming back down here is uh, we're going to have our first NPC invasion. Now, if you're playing online, this might have happened to you already. Like an actual player came and did this. But there are special invasions in the game which are going to happen. Um, okay, I think i got to go. It triggers if you're down here more, kind of, so, yep, here we go. So this is going to be Dark Knight Kirk, who, um, he's not so bad, but, uh, he's, he can be a little tricky if you're not totally prepared for him. So, he, here he is. He's, a uh, he's an interesting guy. He, uh, his armor is, like, really spiky, as you can see. And, uh, his armor does have an interesting effect where, okay, he's already dead. Um, <laughs> come on, Kirk. Put up more of a fight than that. Um, but anyway... Uh, we do get pieces of his stuff as we kill him. Uh, we're going to see him again at some point. Uh, so we got his shield, which is kind of cool. Oh, and his sword. Very, very interesting. Um, but yeah, so he, we're going to see him a few more times. But in general, NPC invasions, they uh, you have to be human. So that's why I reversed my howling. And uh, watch out, because there's some blobs here. But you have to... You have to be human, and then you have to show up in the right spot, and then an NPC will show up, and then you kill. And they'll usually have like special items, or you'll get like part of their story. So um, up here, we're gonna have a shortcut. Um, if we open this door here, uh, we actually saw this room, the big rat room. Um, if we climb up this ladder and break through these boxes, we're back by the bonfire, which I'm actually gonna go and rest at to level up because um, I don't trust myself to not die and lose all these souls in a stupid way. Um, and I'm actually going to start getting attunement up. So, attunement. What is what is that stat? Attunement is how we equip spells. And um, it'll make more sense. I do have to get one more before I actually have an attunement slot. But right now I have none. So I do want to get one more level in that. Um, because that's how we're going to be able to use those pyromancies that we uh, started investing in. And there is something cool in the depths here you can do with pyromancy that I do want to show off, but we're going to do that in a moment here. First, before we do that, let's uh, come around this way, and you can fight these enemies, but there's nothing too special about them. I mean, you can kill the rats for uh, humanity. Um, oh, this NPC. I thought this guy shows up after the boss, but we can say hello to him now. Hi, shall I? And good day to you. I'm Donald of Zena. I'm just, well, a peddler of sorts. I adore trinkets and oddities, so I trade for them. So yeah, he's, he's a really cool kind of guy. Like, his armor is very unique. Um, now, he does sell some sort of random things. You can actually buy that gold pine resin off of him. He sells these crystal equipment, which are interesting because they, they're really good with their stats, but their durability is very low, and you can't repair them. So they're kind of like, you know, uh, one one-time use kind of things. Um, I don't really use them, but... This basically is to solve the problem that I had when, um, you know, I worked my way out of the depths, um, where, you know, you buy a weapon, and it can just sort of, like, these things are strong enough to get you through this in the next area. So, you know, it's kind of there if you need it, but, um, don't really need it. So, oh my god, oh my, that, like, really scared me. <laughs> this thing snuck up on us. And uh, I do want to be careful, because I don't want to hit him by accident. So, wow, that... <laughs> Thanks for the scare there. Uh, yeah, so same talk. Uh, so ammo, everyone sells ammo. And he does sell his own armor, which is kind of pricey. Um, don't need to pick up, but... Well, that is a shame, but yeah, so he's angry because I didn't buy anything. Just telling us his more. Uh, let me talk to him, because I wonder what he has to say. Hmm. I'm 
afraid I don't see anything here. Well, great, great talk. Um, so anyway, yeah, so he's just angry. Um, we're going to see him again. He's going to show up in Firelink Shrine once we uh, clear out the next area. And he actually, he doesn't just sell like random things that we don't need. He um, He's going to sell us armor that we see on bosses, which is really cool. Um, I don't think we've actually seen any bosses yet that we can get their armor off of. But as the game goes on, we're going to... We're gonna be able to do that. So let's uh, summon Solaire here. Um, this is one of the other battles you can get him to, and over here is the trek. So um, I think we have to wait for Solaire to get summoned, which he should be. Yep. So now let's get. Come on. Please. There we go. All right. And the trek is on his way. So um, right here is a pretty interesting item. Uh, the heavy crossbow. This is a strength-based crossbow. So if you're going for a big strength build, um, that's probably your best bet for shooting arrows. Um, so anyway, yeah, we got the, the two stooges here. Um, they're not going to actually be too helpful in the next fight. I'm just sort of summoning them because why not. Um, we're going to want to bust out the, the heavy weaponry here. So we invest in the stats. May as well try out this Black Knight Ultra Gate Sword. <laughs> uh, definitely one of my favorite weapons. Let's uh, get a good look at it here, actually. Yeah, that's really awesome. Um, it might not actually be as good at the moment because it's not upgraded, as whereas our normal Black Knight sword is. But I think it's still gonna do plenty fine. So um, this this is the boss <laughs> if that hasn't been clear yet. So let's go through and get a cool cutscene. Yes, this is the Gaping Dragon. Um, that was one of the my favorite moments in Dark Souls 2, by the way. Um, I was still cursed and still had my broken weapon, but um, I actually fought this guy before I ended up... Now you're going to see why these two suck, because yeah, they, uh, they don't know how to get out of the way. Um, we do want to make sure to get his tail, so let's hit that a few times. And there we go, the Dragon King Great Axe tail. That's... Uh, never actually used it, but it's an awesome strength weapon, and oh god, these two. <laughs> They're not going to last very long. Now this guy, he's, he's very, very scary and intimidating, but um, he's actually not as bad as he looks. Uh, now don't get me wrong, he will royally mess you up. Oh, no. You can actually hit his head, head there, which is why I do that. Um, I say he's not as bad, but he will kill you very quickly if, you're, uh, if you don't respect him. <laughs> so all you have to do is... Wow, the trick is already dead. All you have to do is just watch out for his big attack there, get out of the way and then wait for him to charge and you get a nice big opening. Now, when things aren't okay is when he doesn't want to do that big attack. He'll just sort of uh, chase you around and swipe you. And yeah, these guys, I mean, Solaire's actually holding out, which is pretty impressive. I don't think he's going to survive much longer. Let's see if we can get a little bit of damage in there. Okay, oh boy. Okay, yeah, see the problem is these two, they, they just distract him, and then he'll just swat them for a while. Oh boy. Yeah, so there's not going to survive much longer. Um, yeah, all you have to do is just be patient, keep your distance, wait for him to do the big heavy attack, and rip Solaire. Um, <laughs> sorry, me and you, buddy. So, one of the reasons I like this boss is just because the music is really awesome, honestly. Now, let's see if I can hit the head here. I think I might have hit the head there. Either way, I got some extra damage in. Yeah. The music and the experience of just being like, oh my god, I'm cursed. This is the biggest boss we've fought yet. It was just uh, a very interesting time. And, you know, for me saying as easy as it was, I actually died to him a whole bunch on my first playthrough. But, uh, when I finally did beat him, it was pretty cool. Because it was also a moment where um, I started really learning some mechanics. I didn't really know about fast rolling until then. And this was the first time I'd really, like, switch to light armor. Oh, wow. I didn't realize he was doing that. Can we finish him off? There we go. There we go. So yeah, I switched to light armor. I was using, like, a spear to try to get long range, and it was just so awesome. And when I finally beat him, it was so satisfying. 
so we got a few things there. That key is going to take us to the next area, um, which, you know, surprise, surprise, it's going to be called Blight Town. Very, very infamous area. Um, humanities and Homeward Bone, just the usual, and a decent amount of souls. So, let's, uh, we just got this one last item to grab, which is uh, the armor that we actually started with. So, if you didn't pick the warrior and you want to use that armor, you can just uh, get it here, which is uh, pretty cool. Now, um, this was just the arena, there's not actually much more to do here, but, um, yeah, I will quickly, uh, I'll just go back to the bonfire and just level up, um, just thinking about ending it here, but let's, uh, let's, oh, I want to showcase that thing I was talking about, so first, um, let's level up, uh, I want one more attunement, and if you'll notice on the right, we now have one attunement slot, um, I'm actually gonna just go for two. I want two in the end, so we're just going to get that over with now. Let's see here. So our strength and dexterity are good. I think um, I'll start working on intelligence. Um, that's because uh, we're going to want intelligence in the end. And the reason we want it short term is, um, remember Griggs? We res rescued him from the lower end Uh He won't sell us spells or even like talk to us fully unless we're smart enough. So Let's just get that out of the way. Um, so I will also... Uh, oh yeah, so attunement. Let's um, go to attune magic here, right? And you'll notice we have two slots up here. So let's equip combustion and maybe fire orb. And uh, now if you'll notice, that slot in the middle there finally has some spells. And this is how you do magic, right? So we need to also use the, uh, the pyromancy flame right here. And I'll actually switch back to all my junk while we're at it. Crest shield, okay. So, Pyromancy, right? Um, you want, with your Pyromancer flame equipped, you just have to press the attack button, and boom. And you can do sh strong attack, will just be a punch, which is kind of funny. But uh, anyway, in this area here, uh, and I'm actually just going to quickly just make sure I can light roll, because uh, we're going to want to be fast up ahead. So, Pyromancy is cool, because, you know, here's just this guy that was. Okay, if I can get my distance right. Actually, let's demonstrate Fire Orb here. So, we just chuck. Boom! Light him up. So, with combustion, uh, what you can do here, so you got these slime blobs, right? If you just run and don't think about it, they won't actually land on you. And then what you can do is, these guys are weak to fire, so you just go up to them and just incinerate them. And the reason we're doing this is that these guys can actually drop large titanite shards. And uh, green titanite shards as well. Oh! Ow. Buddy. Not do that when I'm showing things. Um, so yeah, I don't think I'm gonna do this until I get one, but this is a spot where you can farm for large shards and green shards. You just do what I did, you kill them, you pick up what you can, you run back, and you rest. And you'll have a few shards more. So uh, yeah, that's that's pretty cool to do. Um, let me uh, put my armor back on here. I still have a little bit more time. I know this is a uh, Pretty long episode, sorry guys, but I guess we can quickly uh, take a peek at the next area, which is going to be right by our friend that we met earlier. So just push this guy off, run down the stairs here, break this down. Oh yeah, we got the speedrun strats. <laughs> come on along this way. I think we already saw this. Not much more to say. Just a long tunnel. Check the blobs, because that would really slow things down here. Kill the rat. Maybe get humanity. I don't get humanity. And over here, yes, is our next area. This is uh, the store would have been locked, but now that we have the key to Blight Town, we're gonna open it up, and we're gonna notice an immediate change of mood. Yeah, the colors change there. So <laughs> we're finally at Blight Town. This is uh, one of the most infamous areas in the game. Um, but we're going to tackle it next time. Uh, we are definitely definitely out of time now. Um, so I'm just going to end the episode with a strong attack. See you guys next time.